Welcome, welcome everyone. We are gathered today to talk about a minor holiday uh, known as Tu B'Av. Now, a week ago we um, addressed Tisha B'Av, which is one of the most solemn and sorrowful um, times in our history because that was the time there was such tragedy that occurred. Um, two of the most tragic dates uh, were the this the destruction of both of the temples, uh, one um, in the BC era by the Babylonians, and then in the AD era in 70 AD by the Romans, the second temple was destroyed. Plus there was other um, sad uh, parts, uh, sad parts of our history that occurred on that day as well. This is a little bit different. We're going to talk about Tupa, which is a little bit more of a joyous holiday. It is a minor holiday, um, but we are going to touch on that. Um, before we get into that, I want to open this up to an opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in, and then we will talk about Tu Ba'av. Avina Mokena, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for appointed times, and we thank you for the holidays that are observed. And as we're going to learn about Tuba'av. Tuba'av is a holiday of love, and we love you. First and foremost, Father God, you are our creator, you're our Abba, and we love you for who you are and what you are to us and what you signify to us. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. We invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us, to guide us, to show us things we might not have otherwise noticed or paid attention to. So we ask that the eyes of our heart, the ears of our heart are open to whatever it is that you want us to gain from this lesson today so that we can integrate it into our spirit and carry it with us with our walk with you. We love you, Father God. We lift you up. We praise you. We adore you. We honor you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And say with me now the Shehekienu, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Shehekienu, Vekimano, Vehegianu, Lazman Hazei. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion, Tuba of. So we're going to talk about Tuba of. As I mentioned, it, it is the 15th of Av. Um, it is a minor holiday, a minor Jewish holiday. And in modern day Israel, it is celebrated as a holiday of love. Kind of uh, like a Valentine's Day, so to speak. A Jewish Valentine's Day. It has been said to be an auspicious day for weddings also. Tuba of, unlike Tisha B'Av, had been a joyous holiday in the days of the temple in Jerusalem, marking the beginning of the great harvest. Yom Kippur marked the end of the great harvest, and on both dates the unmarried girls of Jerusalem dressed in white garments, and went out to dance in the vineyards. There were no holy days as happy as Tuba of and Yom Kippur. And the holiday celebrated the wood offering also brought in to the temple, as we, we can see in Nehemiah chapter 13. And Josephus referred to it as the Feast of Zylo, Zylophory, and that's spelled X Y L O P H O R Y, and that means wood bearing. While Benaiah Isra wandered in the desert for 40 years, female orphans without brothers could only marry within their tribe to prevent their father's inherited territory in the land of Israel from passing on to other tribes, following the incidents of the daughters of Zelophehad. After the conquest and division of Canaan under Joshua, this ban was lifted. So the ban was lifted on the 15th of Av, and intertribal marriage was allowed. 
That same year, the last of the generation of the sin of the spies, which had been for, forbidden to enter the promised land, found that they were not destined to die. For 40 years, every Tisha B'Av night, uh, the Jews made graves for themselves in which they slept on Tisha B'Av. Every year, a proportion of them died as well. Um, in the 40th year, the, the 15,000 who had remained uh, went to sleep in their graves and woke up the next day to their surprise, thinking that they made a mistake with the date. They did this until they reached Tuba'av and saw a full moon. Only then did they know they were going to enter the land of Israel with the new generation. And the tribe of Benjamin was allowed to intermarry with the other tribes after the incident of the concubine at Gibeah. That is seen in Judges, uh, chapters 19 to 21. The cutting of the wood for the main altar in the temple was completed for the year on Tuba'av. And King Hosea of the northern kingdom removed the sentries on the road leading to Jerusalem, allowing the ten tribes to once again have access to the temple. At this point, there was two king kingdoms. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom um, comprised of ten of the tribes, and the southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin. So. Um, the Roman occupiers um, also on this day in history permitted burial of the victims of the massacre at Bethar during the Bar Kokhba rebellion. Miraculously, the bodies never decomposed despite exposure to the elements for over a year. The nights, traditionally the ideal time for Torah study, are lengthened again at this point after the summer solstice permitting more study and as we know we're in the summer months so our days are longer and in modern times tuba of marks an informal high to to counter the low of the three weeks leading up to tisha b'av so uh tuba of is is more of a happier time it does not have many established religious rituals associated with its celebration, however. Um, and in modern times, it has become a romantic Jewish holiday, and it has been said to be a great day for weddings, commitments, ceremonies, renewal of vows, or proposing. And it, it, it is also a day for romance explored through singing, dancing, giving flowers, and studying. That's a little bit about the 15th of Av to Ba'av. And it is a full moon uh, holiday. It's a minor full moon festive day. Um, so um, there was never a day as festive, Yom Tov, for the Jewish nation as the 15th of the month of Av and Yom Kippur. So um, in in that, the daughters of Jerusalem dressed in white would go out and dance in the vineyards. In other words, um, the 15th of Av was kind of like a matchmaking day. Um, so um, that was one of the significances of it. Now, historically, the 15th of Av became a day of celebration in the year 2487. Um, this would have been 1274 B.C., Israel's 40th year of wandering in the desert. The whole generation of the Exodus had been, basically the first generation, had been sentenced to die in the desert. Um, and they were getting ready to go into the Promised Land. And um, so when um, another night went by and they had survived and made it to the 15th of Av, they were... Um, 15th of Av, uh, Tuba Av, they were um, relieved um, that they had not died in the desert, some of the survivors. So they did celebrate, uh, it, to, to say the least. So there was also a granting of permission in the reign of the judge Othniel to unmarried daughters who inherited land to marry outside of the tribe and still keep their land inheritance and to the other 11 tribes to intermarry with the with the men of the tribe of Benjamin 
in approximately 2545, that would have been 1200 BC, sometime after they had been placed under the ban because of the incident of the concubine at Gibeah. And that was seen in, in the book of Judges. The first of these marriages took place also on the 15th of Av when the bachelors of Benjamin selected brides from the dancing daughters in white in Shiloh, uh, which was then the location of the Ark of the, of, of the Tablets. In later centuries, there were the dismantling in 3187, which would have been 574 BC, of the blockade in, the nor in, in northern Israel that prevented residents from the annual pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and in 3908, which would have been 148 AD, was the release for burial of the dead of Bethar uh, in 15 years after their massacre that ended the Bar Kokhba rebellion. Um, and as mentioned before, miraculously, the bodies had not decomposed. Finally, in the centuries of the two holy temples in Jerusalem, the 15th of Av was also celebrated as the day of the breaking of the axe because the annual cutting of firewood for the altar was concluded on the 15th of Av. And this event was celebrated with feasting and rejoicing as is the custom upon the conclusion of any holy endeavor. And this was, this was definitely a holy endeavor because this was all the wood that was needed for, for the temples. And it included a ceremonial breaking of axes, which gave the day its name. Um, so these events are all worthy of, of commemoration and celebration um, and to remember this day for those um, points of history. Just a little mention of the moon cycles. Um, the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar in which each month begins on the night of a new moon. Uh, it becomes visible, progresses as the moon grows in the nighttime sky and reaches its full luminescent potential on the 15th of the month, the night of the full moon. And that is why so many of the festivals and special days of the Jewish year fall on the 15th of the month, this being the day on which the particular month's special qualities is most expressed and manifest. The month of Nisan, of redemption, um, the process of our liberation from Egypt began, but the results of this process were fully made manifest on the 15th of Nisan with our actual exodus from Egypt. So it is on the 15th of Nisan that we celebrate Pesach, Passover, and experience the divine gift of freedom through the observances of the Passover Seder. The month of Tishri, on the first of Tishri is Rosh Hashanah, and we're going, we're coming upon that very quickly, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> we crown God as king of the universe, rededicating the entirety of creation, to the purpose for which it was created and, and evoking in God the desire to continue to create and sustain it. But the celebration of the divine coronation is eclipsed by the days of solemnity and awe, which occupy the first part of Tishri and comes out in the open in the joyous festival of Sukkot, which commences on the 15th of the month. Um, this theme is true of each of the 12 months of the Jewish year. Each month possesses a character and quality uniquely its own, which undergoes a cycle of diminuate, diminution, blah, I can't speak today, <laughs> of growth, cycles of growth and concealment and expression reaching its climax on the 15th of the month. Another interesting fact about Tuba Av, the 15th of Av, we're 45 days in advance of Rosh Hashanah, um, and um, Rosh Hashanah is considered the day to begin blessing each other for a sweet new year, especially um, as we are approaching that very quickly. Um, so the 15th of Av, Tuba Av, is a minor, minor holiday. 
but it has great significance. And that's why um, we are talking about this. The 15th of Av can also be uh, considered love and rebirth, considering the things that have happened um, on the 9th of Av um, to look at just um, six days later on the 15th of Av um, as a joyous occasion versus the sorrowful occasion of Tisha B'Av. We can maybe look at this as the festival of the future redemption as well. So I think we covered basically the high points of Tuba'ah, the 15th of Av. And of course, we can look um, at this minor holiday as the love that our creator has for us as well. Um, I'm going to conclude this with the with prayer, um, and then we're going to come back with the altar call and close this little teaching session on what Tuba'ah signifies. Um, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the ability to come together. We thank you for history. We thank you for uh, significant times that are set aside, uh, and they have specific meanings. And we thank the Holy Spirit for showing us what this day signifies in history and how it is carried on today as well. We thank you for your word. We know that your word is faithful and true. We know you're faithful and true. And we know that you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that is love from you and love from Yeshua that cannot be duplicated in any other fashion because it is love that is so deep that we can't even grasp the depth of that love for what you have done for us. And no one would ever do that for us. So we thank you, Yeshua, for your sacrifice, for the love that you had for humanity to come and give your life for us so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you. We thank you in your mighty name, in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. We're going to come back with that altar call and explain this a little bit more. And for those that have never given your life to Yeshua, to Jesus, this will be a wonderful opportunity to, to do so.